A couple months ago, I thought it'd be a fun idea to try and breed some of the Neon Tetras I had in my fish room. I bought these guys last year for a breeding project that I did, and I was actually successful with breeding them, but I was unable to raise any of the fry that I bred. So I was still determined to try and get some extra fry in the fish room to use as did the fish for some of my Pleco tanks. I had quite a big school of them, about 15 of them, and all of these fish were imported. At the time I was breeding them, I think that they were over about six months old, I'm not too sure, and they were definitely sexually mature. There was really big plump fat females and lots of really sexually mature males. To breed them, I used a simple container that I've used for a lot of different breeding series on my channel. And this is just a four liter container that I get from Kmart here in Australia. I set these containers up in my storage room, which is a little bit cooler than the main fish room at about 21 degrees Celsius compared to the 25 to 26 degrees of the other room. I set these guys up in pairs with a little bit of cocoa peat within each tub and I used RO water within the containers. So reverse osmosis water, which is just pure water as these guys are from the Amazon and they do require very soft, low mineral water to breed in. So they won't breed in normal tap water. You do need very soft water for them to spawn and for their eggs to properly hatch out. Having my RO system really did help. If I didn't have this, I would have used some rainwater, but the RO is much more predictable. So anyways, I introduced all the pairs in the morning, the day before I wanted them to breed. I left them overnight and the next morning they all spawned. Now not all the pairs spawned, only a few of them did. But the first time I spawned them, they did not fertilize the eggs properly. So it took a few attempts, but we finally did end up getting a successful spawn in two of our containers. I left these eggs for 24 hours and then they hatched out. And you can see here a tiny little wriggler, which is a newborn fish that's less than an hour old in this container. I then came back the next day and had a look at our fry. And you can see he's the exact same as the day before, except now he's got little eyeballs forming. On day three, I came back to the room and had a look at our little fry and they had all started to take off. So these guys had developed very, very quickly and we had little free swimmers within our container. So on this day, I gave them their first food which was some boiled egg yolk and they took to that very well and they started to rapidly grow. You can see here we've got a clip from day seven and this is a little fry having some micro worms. So I continue to feed them boiled egg yolk throughout the week and then I introduce some micro worms at the end of the week when they started to get a little bit larger. You can see he looks nothing like a neon tetra yet but does have that fish shape and by this stage they are all confidently swimming around the container. A few days after that, they were big enough to start eating baby brine shrimp. And this is when their growth started to rapidly increase. So you can see here that we've got some fish that have started to get a lot bigger than what they previously were. And at this stage, it was time to move them into their final grow out tank. So for this, I just used a two foot grow out tank. This is a 60 liter tank. What I did was I simply just poured the container into this tank and added a little bit extra water. So it was a little bit of a bigger volume of water and slowly, incrementally, raise the level of the water in the tank over the coming days. There weren't many fry, only about 30 of them. I thought we had a lot more, but it turns out I got my numbers wrong and we only had about 30 of them. Here you can see a clip of all those little fry swimming around in their new tank, and they've actually started to develop their little neon stripe. They were very, very cute looking, but still had a lot of growing to do before they were adult size. So I left these guys in their tank for another couple of weeks and came back at a month to see how big they were. And here you can see that the fry had started to really turn into little neon tetras. They've all developed some color and they've all developed their neon stripe and they actually looked like teeny tiny little versions of the adult fish. At this age, they were super, super cute, but we did run into a few issues. So as you can see, there was a few fry that weren't swimming properly and these guys had some issues with their swim bladders. So I'm not too sure what caused this, I think it's got something to do with the fish not being able to get to the top of the previous container to fill their swim bladder. It could also be genetic. There's all kinds of things that happen when we breed fish. Unfortunately, some of these fish did not make it. And I was really disappointed to see this, but this is part of breeding fish. However, their siblings continue to grow and you can see all their bellies are full with baby brine shrimp and they just really, really rapidly grew. And I came back another month later and they'd grown even more. So the fish you're looking at here are about two and a half months old and these guys are breeding size now. So 
they're just starting to reach breeding size they probably won't lay eggs for another couple of weeks but they're almost at that sellable size and it just shows you how quickly these fish grow tetras grow rapidly and this was a really fun project to do you can see they all look exactly like their parents and they're super super healthy i did notice a few of them had missing gill covers and i'm not too sure what caused this this could also be genetic but i'm not entirely sure this doesn't affect the lifestyle of the fish but it does affect the appearance of the fish so i won't be selling any of these guys but i will be keeping them just as dithers in my fish room up in the top of my pleco tanks i don't really care that they don't have their gill covers because it was only a few of them that didn't have it the rest of them looked smick and smack and this was just overall such a fun project to do I'd highly recommend you guys go and try this out. I will be doing this again and trying to get a ton more fry because it was just that satisfying. But I had a super fun time trying to breed these little Neon Tetras and to get some fry at the end was super exciting. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. I appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.